So, welcome everybody to the um, Weaving Passion online uh, Beltane ritual. It strikes me that, um, you know, when we come into doing the fourth ritual here, um, we are solidly into the turn of this grand cycle. Um, and there is lots of work that has already been done. There's lots of, of insights that we have already come to. And this weaving passions ritual is about being able to pull some of those threads into something which is becoming a recognizable weave. So I start with um, a Beltane poem um, by Morgana. This isn't somebody that I know, but it's a poem that I've come across which speaks to the time that we are opening our hearts to. Hilltop fires glowing bright, calling in the Beltane night. Gleeful youths a barefoot tread along the paths the ancients led. Laughing, singing, loving free, they land beneath the elder trees. The fay look on, then join the sight, dancing gaily through the night. King and queen, young and old, none left standing in the cold. Rich or poor, all join the fray, bringing in the Beltane day. And this speaks to the joy and community and the dance the energies that are being woven at this time. Beltane is traditionally celebrated with a maypole dance, which not only represents the Earth's reception of the divine spark necessary for conception, if the planted seed is going to flourish, but it also illustrates that we are not isolated. We are interdependent. And as hard as it can feel sometimes to risk the trust required of intimacy, our human nature calls us to relationship. Our spirit nature yearns to dance with others. The alchemical stage of conjunction is the first solid, though yet imperfect, coming together. It is this stage that, from a soul alchemist approach anyways, is reflected at this time of year in this cycle. And this stage, this conjunction stage, reflects the balanced relationship of two equal parts as they work to find harmony. Similar to the way in which a maypole dance may start somewhat wobbly if anyone has participated in one. The weave at the start can be um, a little off kilter until the participants find the flow of the weaving rhythm. It is challenging, though not impossible, to weave a maypole alone. And this ritual invites a solo dance through the technique of branch weaving that offers the exploration of the interwoven nature of life with the emotions that support manifestation. It invites the weaving of aspects of ourselves, of our vision and our will and our ability. So whatever it is that you hold as a vision that you are choosing to experience within yourself, within your life, to bring in into your future. This is what can be woven. And bringing the energy of passion and the strength of heart to that dance and to that work. And 
so now. With each of four breaths, bring your awareness fully to each of four directions that surround you and the elements that are aligned with them. Breathe into north and the element of earth. Breathe into east and the element of air. Breathe into south and the element of fire. And breathe into west and the element of water. And with each of the next two breaths, bring your awareness fully into the below and the above. Breathe into the below and feel the unwavering foundation of the earth bound material plane. Allow yourself to connect with all those who have walked in this place before you. All of the ancestors and the ancient ones who held this space. And breathe into the above. Expand into the limitless breadth of the cosmic plane. Breathe into the all that has ever been. Expanding into timelessness. And with your next breath, find the place in the very center in which all these directions, including above and below, come together. Breathe into this center in the element of ether or spirit. If you have deities on your altar, or even if not, if you want to invite in, take a moment to acknowledge divine presence in this space. Take several more deep breaths and know that you yourself are also at the center of this sacred space. You too hold this space at the very hub of the universe. You are the meeting place of spirit above and matter below and the magic that surrounds.
And as you sit in this place of the meeting place of the above and below, allow yourself to feel ever so deeply the power of the intersection point of those two very different energies. Take hold of your forked branch, paying particular attention to the meeting point of the two branches, the crux that creates a potent crucible for manifestation. In this moment, At this time of your life, what would you choose to dance into being? If there is a relationship to forge or a dream to realize, what would you choose to instill with the amplifying potential of passion? And when you are ready to begin, when you feel clarity around those energies, light the candle before you. and connect with the energy of your heart. The meeting place of your human and spirit selves and the meeting place of self with other. Before you begin the weaving dance, take some time to also contemplate the frame created. If you have not created the frame, you can take some time to weave that. And consider the foundation to your endeavors. What is the framework upon which you build? Who and what are the supports in your life?
when you have a sense both of what is being woven and what supports the weaving light the candle in the center of your altar and prepare to begin to weave Take some time choosing the first color with which to work. What does it represent to you of what you are weaving into your life? What you are dancing into being? What passion you are amplifying? when that feels clear to you tie one end of the yarn or ribbon to the top arm at the closest end to the wide opening of the fork and begin to weave in an under over under over pattern until you come to the fork and then shift direction and weave in an under over pattern until you reach the wide opening again. And continue to weave until it feels that the time is right in the dance to choose a bead. And if this bead represented one quality in you that would help you to dance your dream into being, what would that be? When the answer is clear to you, string the bead on your yarn or ribbon and keep weaving until either you come to the end of the length or it feels complete. Just feel the rhythm of the weave, feel the build of the dance, and just take your time. We have time. Shift color when you feel called to shift color, string beads, when you feel called to string beads. It is the rhythm and the intention that matters.
will take about another five minutes or so. This is a weave that can continue through the cycle. And so take some time to add in, um, if you want to add in another bead or add another color, we'll take about another five minutes.
even if the weave is not done just set your branch before you and take some time to charge it with the power of your intention you can continue to weave as I said through the cycle or through the day but connect with the power of your heart gaze into the light of the flame connect to that spark of your flame within your heart and feel the strong current of love dedication devotion and passion that flows from that place from your heart from your light from your spark into your weaving into your branch And as we started with listening to the words of a song that is not recorded <laughs> in the ritual, take some time, listen to this song, listen to the words of this song. If you're called, pick up your branch, dance around the room with it. I'll play it loud. Feel the passion and the energy moving through you, charging your life, your intention, your vision, your future.
And just take a breath. If you have been dancing, just allow your body to come to rest and feel the energy that flows through you. Even if you haven't been dancing physically up and around the room, still feel that energy. Connecting to your branch, connecting to the weaving, connecting to the trees. And opening yourself to a reflection from the Om. So there are seven cards this time. At this rate, by the time we get to Samhain, we're going to have 24 cards <laughs> laid out. <laughs> but yeah, it evolves. And there was something about, um, I picked up this wool um, today. This, the, these are naturally dyed. Um, what do I have? Matter and indigo and these are two indigos and um, I can't remember. It wasn't beetroot. Anyways, I ended up with seven. So we have seven trees. And you can pick a number between one and seven. You can be aware of where you sit in your chakras and be drawn to a chakra re reflection. I mean, you're welcome to take all seven as chakra reflections. But sit with what you are called to. And so the first, or if you want it related to the root chakra, is, if you can see it there, willow. Let's see if I can get it in close. Oi, there. It's a little bright. So this is, it says, intuition, the unseen. This is a very watery tree, an emotional tree. And sitting in the sacral, oh, <laughs> we have, you see there, blackthorn, strife, truly strife, adversity sacrifice, getting caught on the thorns can give us challenge. And solar plexus, ah, it's a good one to follow strife. We have, can you see there, Luis, Rowan, And that is defense, protection. The Rowan coming close to the beginning of the year is also a sense of quickening. You can see, can you see there on his staff, there's an energy that moves through that. Right in 
the center, aligned with this cycle, with the green, the candle, we have <gasps> interesting cord. Cord is the grove. It is the community of trees itself. Oneness. Consciousness. It's listening to the varied voices of all the trees. It holds the axiom of this cycle itself, honor diversity. There's power in diversity. And the throat. Ah, you see their ivy, gort, tenacity. It feels a little bit like the tenacity needed to continue the weave if things get stuck or tangled. We just have to keep going. Feel stuck. Find the ease, keep moving. And the third eye. Ah, Uyant. You see there, Woodbine. So this is clarity and focus. There can also be a sense of sweetness here that comes with that focus and determination and bringing lightness to the work. And then with the crown. <laughs> Moin, the vine, the harvest. The vine can be as tangled sometimes as ivy. But there is such abundance and so much that can be created from that abundance. It is the energy of the crown, isn't it? It's everything is held in that place. And there's so much that can be created from that wisdom. So just hold the message of your tree or your trees. And your branch and your weave. Yourself your life, your dance. Shaking the trees, shaking it up, stepping into power, your own empowerment, expressing that out in the world. And it's time to leave this space, to leave this place. So bring your awareness back to your breath. And take one last moment to anchor that connection with your sense of your essence. And using either your breath or a candle snuffer, release the flame of the candle before you. What has been experienced in ritual lives 
forever in your cells. It need only be called forth from within whenever you choose. So take some time to move through the directions once more, thanking the elements for helping to hold space and keep you safe through the ritual. Start again in the north with the earth and move through the east with air and south with fire and west with water. And thank also the below of the material plane and the above of the cosmic plane. And thank and bid farewell to the deities who have been a part of this ritual with you, who have held this space with you. And know that the wheel may turn around you, but you are, as they are, ever at the center. The Beltane fire sends its flames to the sun, the promise of summer, warmth to come. The horned god dances through the green, chasing after his goddess and queen. Hawthorn blossoms in radiant white and clarity grows in the quickening light. Now is the time for action and life to fertilize plans and banish strife. Take the leap across the Beltane fire and let the energies take you higher. Thank you all for being a part of this weaving passions ritual for sharing this space with me and for everybody who joined in the land of ether. And I look forward to seeing you again at another turn of the wheel when we meet for the height of the summer, the summer solstice. So I bid you also farewell. Um, I will stop the recording and for those who are here in a live time, we can uh, talk a little bit about our trees. So thank you everybody.